Alright, in this video we're going to be taking a Hoyt Nitrum Turbo 26 inch draw number one cam from out of the box to full tune. We're going to be putting bright yellow hog wire strings on it. Um, the quality of the Hoyt strings are actually pretty good. I just, just wanted different colors. They're actually surprisingly nice. The black the black and silver, and when the black trans transitions to the silver, it's pretty clean looking. The servings look good. I just wanted different colors. And Hogwire makes good strings, so we're going to throw those on. Well, it's all set up now. We went ahead and installed the Hogwire strings, the yellow accessories, the yellow grip. Um, the B Stinger Elite sidebar mount. The I have a Trophy Taker Extreme cable driven drop away on right now. I have a customized Black Gold Rush sight. Um, I figured most people either know how to do all this stuff, they know how to tie it in, or you can look it up on YouTube. That's how I learned or log on to Archery Talk, there's a lot of good information on there. Um, I didn't feel like doing a whole video section on how I on how I run it, but I can in the next video if you'd like, because we have to set up an RPM 360 with custom strings. They're sitting right there, by the way. Um, so let me know if you want me to make my own video on how I tie and serve all my knots. But I have this drop away set up so it's a cable driven drop away. I have it served in so right when it hits full draw, that's that's when it uh hits the full up position. You don't want it any sooner than that because it will create torque on your bus cable that travels down and you don't want that. Um for my D loop I have the regular D loop and I went ahead and I served in some serving knots above and below the knock so if the D-loop ever breaks or or if it's causing excess torque I can just remove it and tie a new one I don't have to worry about my knocking point anymore basically what I did is I just tied three overhand knots and it creates a nice small knocking point and it does its job really well um, I tried a different one and it was just pinching the heck out of the knock and I didn't want that so I went ahead and removed it and did it the simple way which is oftentimes better so we have that all set up the knock is running dead level it's a lot of people like to run knock high but I I prefer dead level so we can get the cams in sync just how we want them um, for my peep sight I like to serve around the middle and then take that same strand and run it up the top and run it up the bottom. It creates a peep sight that's just really solid and doesn't move. And frankly, I like the looks of it. I mean, that looks sweet in my eyes. So, the TPU, the TPU speed sleeves are running in the stock position. We might fine tune those at a later time to get all the speed out of it but that's pretty much the initial setup um, the only tips I have for installing your accessories are put some string wax on the threads so that the steel bolts and the aluminum don't fuse together over time if you plan to keep the bow for a while um, you have to excuse my voice throughout this video I have a cold but I thought you guys would like to see this tuning process. So now we get to the fun part and we actually have to start tuning it. Alright, so we shot the new strings in. It was just to get the servings to settle completely. Um, now we just need to get a rough time for the cams. And I want the top cam hitting just a little tiny bit before the bottom. Right now, it's a little bit behind, so the bottom cam is hitting first, and there's about a sixteenth of an inch gap. 
They're a little over a sixteenth of an inch, so we're going to go ahead and press it. And we're going to remove one twist from the control cable, which should bring it in a little closer and we'll check it again. You don't really want to do half twists because it can promote serving separations on the bends. That's okay. Okay, make sure everything's in its grooves. Everything's where it's supposed to be. So we're just checking the timing. still behind just a little tiny bit so we're just going to do one more full twist and that will be our rough set cam timing So they're hitting pretty much dead even right now, and we'll um, we're gonna leave that alone until bare shaft tuning and whether it hits high or low compared to the fletch will let us know what we need to do as far as timing goes. Um, now I'm gonna check top cam lean. We're gonna set this at zero for starters and I don't have a draw board I don't think it's necessary so I'm just going to use I'm just going to pull it back and check it with me holding it that way it'll be zero cam lean for my grip and for my shooting really close but I'm going to go ahead and put a half twist in the right one alright so we're going to put a half twist in here because it has just a tiny bit of lean we're not going to bother with taking any out from the other side because if anything this will just advance the top cam a little bit more, which is not going to hurt anything for starters. Have a really neutral grip to start out with. So cam timing and cam lean is now good all around for starters. Um, like I said, the rest is running right down the middle for the most part for a starting position and now we're going to go out and we're going to French tune to set the final center shot. And I, I believe it's modified French tuning but don't quote me on that. Um, after we get done with that we're going to shoot some bare shafts and that will tell us where we need to be. Alright guys, so it's been a while since I last updated the video. I've been really busy with, you know, just school work and life, but uh, ready to get some tuning done. I also uh, ended up breaking my thumb release, which is pretty disappointing, but so, happens, accidents happen. So I'll be shooting uh, Rhino XD, because turkey season actually just started today, so I need to get this rolling get this thing tuned up so I can go kill some birds but <clears throat> so we're gonna move on to French tuning um, it's important to have good form with all of this this is just to set the center shot and then we'll bear shaft tune after this but with French tuning you want to shoot at a string a vertical string it's uh, about two yards away two or three yards away um, move the sight 
tell you split the string and I've cheated I've already gone through that process so if anything if I don't hit the string on this shot it's just because I missed it's not because it's off I already did this part um, but yeah you just aim right at the string and see if you can hit the string it's important to have your second and third axes already set before you do this or else it'll you can skew your results so that's all good for me so here we go yeah so I didn't split the string but as you guys can see or maybe not see but it is touching the string when it stops. I mean, it's close. That's just me. You don't want to spend too much time on this because you're actually you're going to finish it off with the shaft tuning. But and then I'll finalize everything and make sure you have good air flight. But so now we'll move back to 20 yards or so, just because that's what I have at my house. Um, you can go back farther distances if you want, but just make sure you go to a longer distance. Preferably longer than 10 or 15 yards because it'll just make it more accurate. So we're going to move back to 20 yards now. And I already did all this, but you should have already set your windage on your sight. And make sure you're splitting the string up close. We're going to move back and see where this arrow hit. Alright, so you can see that. Um, I was at about 20 yards, I didn't go back quite all the way because I've already done this, but that's pretty close. That was just me, I've already done all this. Um, so, say if you hit left, like I just did, but a little bit more, uh, you would want to move your, now since you're at longer range, you would want to move your rest to the right a little bit and bring that closer, wait until you're surrounding the line keep moving it until you're surrounding the line and then go back to the shorter distance and check your windage you're probably gonna have to do a few back and forth sessions but just get it close the more you do it the more accurate it's gonna be so or the more accurate this tuning results gonna be um, but I've already done that so we'll move on to bare shaft tuning And we are on the bear shaft tuning. I have two bear shafts to test my consistency. Uh, make sure I'm not just all inconsistent and chasing my tail with bear shafts basically. But I haven't done this yet so I don't know where it's going to hit. Um, speaking of the inconsistencies with bear shafts, with my last bow, I was chasing my tail for like two weeks trying to bear shaft tune the thing. I couldn't even get him to fly consistently. Um, I figured out it was my D loop. I was getting knock pinch. Uh, these, my knots were a little, let's see, there it is. Okay, my knots were too close together. When I drew it back, they were pinching it and causing it to. Well, they're just causing erratic flight. Um, none of those are good things. So once I fixed that, it took out the inconsistencies and I was able to finish bare shaft tuning. But just make sure you're getting a little, or you're not getting knock pinch. I like to have just a little bit of wiggle room. Let's see if the camera can pick this up. All right, Oop. okay. I don't know if you guys. There's just a little bit of wiggle room, I'd say. Probably a 32nd of an inch. Some people go a 16th of an inch, but I really don't find that necessary. Um, just keep playing with it until you get the results you want. I mean, everyone's different. Another thing that I changed to fix that those issues on my last bow was I lengthened the D loop a little bit. It was 
even shorter than this one, and I like short loops. And with, uh, with any release actually, but more so with a thumb release or a handle release, when you twist it, you're going to torque the string a little bit. And the shorter your D loop is, the less it reduces torque, and so you'll be chasing your tail with that too. But I've already done that. It's um, set pretty good. I shouldn't have any issues there. So we'll see how it flies. I'll shoot the fletched first. We're at 20 yards. Normally, people start with 10 yards to make sure it doesn't go too bad. But since we've already modified French tune, um, we don't really need to do that. It should be pretty close. All right, we'll go see how I did. Looks like they're flying a little tail left and they're hitting a little right. The fletch being low is pretty much just me. I'll do another round and confirm that it's not actually hitting low. We'll, we'll shoot again. All right, so here's the second group. This is actually a better grouping now. The bear shafts are touching. So they're still hitting a little right, a little high. Um, I'm gonna advance my top cam uh, just a little bit. So that'll get rid of the, or it should get rid of the tail low impact high. I'm gonna take a, let's see, take a twist out of the control cable which would make my top cam hit before my bottom cam a little bit more. My knock is level, so I like to play with the cam timing instead of playing with the rest up and down. It makes sure that you're getting the best wall and just let it take care of itself. Um, I'm also going to do another half in the left yoke and a half out of the right on the bus cable and then we'll go from there we'll see what happens after that well folks there you have it that is the 20 yard results after the half twist out of the control and half um oh and uh, another half into the left yoke and half into the right uh, I'd say it's like an inch group maybe a little bit more with two bear shafts and a fletch. I think I'll take that, especially if you're just getting used to this bow. Um, like I said, that's at 20 yards, so. You can be done tuning now. I mean, that's really good flight. Uh, I might move back to 30, I probably will. And just uh, fine, really fine tune things if, if need be, see what happens, but you can be done by that or after you finish bear shaft tuning at 20. So the bow is all bear shaft tuned and there's only a few more things we have to do before it's all before the tuning process is all done and it's a complete bow. So we'll run it through the chronograph. This is a 325 grain arrow. Are right, we going to check the arrow weight for you guys? Turn this on. Three hundred twenty-six point four, and we'll weigh this other one. Three hundred twenty-five point two at sixty-four pounds. All right, we're gonna check the poundage for you guys. Just a handheld Cabela scale. Sixty-four point two. Twenty-six inch draw length. Point nitrogen turbo. All right, so we have three hundred on the dot. Pretty cool. 
Um, we're gonna run a 489 grain arrow through it now, which is what I'll be using for elk. 489.6. And this is not tuned for this arrow, but I just wanted to see how it would do. And uh, I'll probably pick up a few feet per second once I tune into this arrow later in the summer when I'm switching over to elk, but we'll see how it does. <laughs> it's a lot slower. All right. 248. Check out my light kit quote unquote <laughs> it's just uh, some bright battery power lights I have over the diffusers I don't know if they actually do anything but I'm getting accurate and consistent readings so I see no point in buying a whole light kit so now we're gonna start tuning the TPU speed sleeves uh, for speed and from my understanding is you just want to move them up and down the string at small increments of about an eighth of an inch uh, and you move them both at the same time you can move one you just have to experiment just make sure you're doing them um, both either towards the cam or both away from the cam you don't want to go towards the cam on this side and then go down here and pull it away from the cam because that could screw up your tune and you're just trying to find the one the combination that gives you the best speed and uh, I've never done this before, but we'll try it out and see if we can pick up a few feet a second. It might take a while, so I'm not going to videotape all of it, uh, but I'll show you my results when I'm done. So I'm done moving the speed sleeves, and I think I found the combination that works the best. I picked up more than I thought I would, so we'll run it through the chronograph and I'll show you my results. three oh nine I've been getting consistent three oh eights and three oh nines so I think I found the combination that works best that's a eight to nine feet per second increase by just moving the speed sleeves around and I'm pretty happy with that we'll run the four hundred and eighty nine grain arrow through it now and see what we get out of it Two fifty-six. I've been getting uh, maybe that was just a little off, but I've been getting two fifty-eight out of that one. So I got a ten feet per second increase with the heavier arrow, and a eight to nine feet per second increase with the lighter arrow, and I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not sure if you get results like that on all the cams for Hoyt. But I'm thinking because this was the number one cam that it was more sensitive and that's why I saw the feet per second increase that I did. Either way, I'm happy with the results. I picked up a lot of speed and I think it's running uh, a few feet per second over IBO, so I'm pretty happy with it. So the last thing you have to do if you have stabilizers is uh, you can tune the weight on the end of the stabilizers to to... Uh, minimize your pin flow and tighten up your groups even more and just really fine tune it. I have a 12 inch B stinger out front and a 10 inch out back off of a B stinger elite quick disconnect and uh, I've already done it but basically what I do is I draw back look at my float relax and start running your shot but instead of executing look at your pin float and see what it's doing around the bullseye um, I find that if the pin is bobbing up and down and it's trying to stay above the bullseye more than it is below and you're kind of fighting it to get down then you're going to want to remove some back weight and put up some more weight up front and if it's dipping down low then you can add back weight and you can uh, light in the front. If you're getting 
pin waggle side to side and you can add weight out front and out back um, and you can just you can play with the left and right swing of the sidebar mount until you get it all level and usually that helps uh, fix up the side to side misses and side to side and pin float and this is just uh, really fine tuning it some people like to do this before they bear shaft tune. I like to do it afterwards and after I get used to the bow so I give it a chance to really settle in and uh, make sure that I really do need to change something so I'm not chasing my tail. Uh, so I like to do it at the end. But that's about it. This, this bow is all tuned up until I change over to elk arrows and I'll have to re-bear shaft tune for them. But all I have for tuning. Uh, a tip I have is to keep a log book, uh, record your twists in and out of the cables and strings. So if uh, so if you make a mistake and you need to want to go back, it's right there. You can just go back to how you had it. It won't be too big of a struggle. One more thing is uh, regarding the French tuning or the modified French tuning. You don't have to do that if you if you don't like to, uh, you can just pick a center shot and bear shaft tune around it from there. Um, I ended up with a final center shot from the rubber to the middle of the arrow as a three quarter inch center shot. Um, and that's generally what people recommend anyway for this model. So I really wouldn't have had to bear, uh, modify French tune, but I didn't mind it and it got me to the same place. So if you want to skip that part, look up what the recommended center shot is for your bow or just run it straight down the grip and then go into bear shaft tuning. That's all I have for you guys. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned from it. If you want to see more tuning and shooting tips as well as some hunting videos, subscribe to Brunk Outdoors and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.